Hey friends, come join me. I have a song on my heart. And God, we look to you tonight. I hope it's not too loud. Um, about the singing, God, about the music. I tell you, about the songs. This morning in, in service, really just this, this morning, I got, up, I got up in such a rush because I had overslept. And um, I was just like, Lord, you know, all just help me. Tired, you know, in my body. Hello, uh, Kendall. Um, and um, just while I was there, I was just listening to my pastor. I thank God for my pastor. I thank God for the people there at the church. You know, uh, hello, Terry. Hello, Stephen. And uh, just in the worship, you were just to feel his presence. And um, there was something that was mentioned today that it just stuck with me and made me think about. Um, my friends and loved ones that were just going so strong, you know, in the Lord. And how important it is that we have a tender heart. There's a lot of times where people, we just know the routine or we've been hurt by somebody or, you know, and it just builds and builds and builds to where our heart grows cold and hard. You want to keep a tender heart. You want to be open to Him, you know. And I, I was just thinking about, you know, the things that I have went through and I know that it is people that have rejected me because I told, chose Jesus and that that's hard to do it without the Lord you know he gives you that strength you know to get through it and um, I just want to encourage those you know to hold on to Jesus don't allow the enemy to steal you know um, your call. Don't allow the enemy to steal your relationship with him. Don't allow your, your heart to draw cold towards him. Surrender all. Surrender everything. And be open to him. You know? I tell you, I thought, I was like, this time last year, I was like, you know, you're growing. There's a lot that's changed. I tell you. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew in me a right spirit. Oh God, that I know you. Oh God, all the days of my life I serve you. Oh yes, Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In me, that should be our prayer. Have your way, Lord. Like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In me, oh God, like a mighty rushing wind. Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Oh, God, like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way That should be our prayer each and every day. That should be our prayer that, you know, um, my pastor, you gave the example, like, this is not a sprint on this walk. This is a marathon. You keep running. You don't just quit. You know, you hold on to them. And like I said, I thought about the things that I have endured. It's the grace of God that brought me through it. But I think of so many that were walking before me and they're no longer with them or they're, um, just going through the motions 
Allow God to heal you. Allow God to soften your heart. Don't grow cold. Don't don't go and quit. Don't just sit there and just go through the motions. And you're in a bind. You're bound and you need freedom. Because it's right there. Lord, have your way in me. Have your way in my family. Have your way in my home. Even with those situations, I thought about like, with even when I was married, I didn't have that liberty, you know, to worship. I didn't have that liberty, you know, just to sit up and say, I want to go to church. You know, it would, it would be an argument. And I had to go to the Lord and say, God, I need you to help me. You know, you know, I want to honor my husband, but God, you know, I love you. And like I said, it comes to that point where sometimes the person is just like, who are you going to choose? Are you going to choose me or are you going to choose your God? It's pretty much the gist of everything. We're either going to choose a person or a, a thing, you know. But he has to be greater. He has to be your all, you know. Do you want to really know him? Do you really want to walk with him? I tell you, I want to know him, you know. I want to know him. I want him to be very evident in my life to where wherever I may be at, where in my classroom, in my home, as a mother, as a daughter, as a friend, as a aunt, as a sister. I want to be effective in this world. And that should be our prayer. And like I said, I just thought about, you know, my friends, you know, that are no longer walking with the Lord. Where they've grown cold because someone has hurt them. And they didn't have the love of God in their life. You know, we got to take that serious. You know, it shouldn't just be like, oh, well, who, you know, like you, your eyes should be on him. That, that is the gist. But we're supposed to have that in our character as well. We shouldn't be the same position as we were, you know, a month ago or six months ago. Or you, you should be growing. You don't want to be stagnant. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Oh, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. That should be your prayer each day. God, how can, how can you use me? How can I serve? Every day, I surrender. When you go before Him like that, there's some things that's going to break down. There's some things that's going to change. You won't be able to stay in that same little mode. I ain't going to do this. You're not going to walk in pride. You're not going to walk in anger. You're not going to walk in fear. Oh, surrender. I surrender. Oh, God, I want to know you more. To that relationship with him, the more you want to know him, you want more people to know who he is. You want to see other people to get free. You want other people to sit there and grow. Spend time. Spend time with them. I want to know you more. Oh, I surrender. I surrender. your children to know who Jesus is. They should be able to see that in your life. You should be exemplifying that. The best thing that you can do is introduce the Lord to your children. But live it. Be that before them. You know, I tell you, I haven't always had it together. When I was raised in a Christian home, I knew the right things to do. I knew how to sit there and carry myself. I was very moral. And then it got to a point where I was allowing other things to be my idols in my heart. So those choices and my actions and my lifestyle, it changed because I compromised. One thing you don't want to do is just let go of him and just put him on the back burner. Be like, well, I know he loves me. I know he died for me. But you live as if, as if he doesn't exist. You live as if you don't love him. You live as if how um, he sees you and how he feels, it doesn't matter. When he is, when Jesus is a priority, there's going to be a change in your life. And for me, it's like I, nothing else is going to exalt their stuff higher than him, period. 
I'm not going to let anything interfere in that relationship with him. So if it's something that's coming, you know, into my life or trying to connect to me that is an interference with him, I'm going to break away from him. No, because why? I want to know him more. I want the Lord to have his way in my life, oh God. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Oh, I surrender. How many's going to surrender? You want to give him everything. You want to give him your all, not half of you. And the way that we grow is spending time with him, being in his presence. It's just like a, a couple. You know, I'm going to use the example of a couple that's married. You know, you're going to do things to um, make sure that your that your, your uh, spouse, you know, feels loved and valued. And that's the same thing with our relationship with the Lord. You should honor him. You should respect him. What he says, you know, be obedient, you know, to his word. You know, a lot of times I'll see different, um, you know, posts and so forth. And, you know, the way that you know somebody that is going to honor and respect you is the way their relationship with the Lord. You know, that sounds a little cliche, but the way somebody treats Jesus, you'll know how they're going to treat you. You know, so if somebody's inconsistent, somebody that's cold, somebody's that's how that's how they're gonna sit there and, and treat you. So you you need you know um, to really build that relationship and guard it the same way as a, a a a couple that's married. They protect that marriage. They protect their vows. You know because they value that marriage and each other. And that's how we should feel about our relationship with Jesus. He loves us. And he has a plan and a purpose for all of us. Um, not one person here is here by mistake. You know? And he gives us tools. He gives us instruction. He gives us guidance, you know, on how to be effective in this walk. You know? Um, I can't sit up here and cry because I won't cry my lashes off. But, um. Uh, my only regret is just that I didn't kick in here sooner, you know, and that I just wasted so much time, you know, um, and I value people, you know, but I guess recently what my burden is, is just, you know, I know people that pray for me and they're no longer in this walk because, um, something has impacted, you know, has, has stunned them, has, has knocked them down. And I remember when, from 2013, you know, um, it was de very difficult, difficult season, you know, for me. And, and that difficult, I look at how God, you know, taught me and showed me so much from that time. But it also created um, a foundation for me. Because from that point, you know, I literally felt like uh, I was being buried alive. So it put a fight in me. You know, um, it put a, a made up mind to me like, no matter what, you know, I refuse to die here. You know, and when certain things arise, like even this month, it was an incident where um, I've been honoring the Lord, you know, with my monies, you know, and, and um, uh, a, a situation arise to where I didn't get, you know, my support. And it was kind of like one of those things like, uh, oh, ha ha ha, Duan, are you still going to honor him, you know? with your, your money and stuff, but I look at what how God makes provision, you know, for my daughters and I, and I constantly remind, especially my oldest, my oldest daughter, you know, that he cares about every area of your life, and I, I go to him, you know, Lord, help me to be the mother that you've created me to be, but also, I know I'm designed to be a wife, but I'm not in a position to where I feel like I have to be one. You know, I know who I am uh, in Jesus Christ. Um, I, I know what he's created me to do. So my thing is, like, I'm going to still keep on serving him. Even if Dwan, you know, raises her children and she lives this life, you know, single. 
You know, I mean, there was a time where I was just like, I have to be married. I have to be a mom. I have to. No, I want to be everything that God has designed me to be. And that's why the certain posts that I share is to let other people know that you don't have to, um, even if there's a, a chaos or whatever or struggling, there should be that solid peace. You know, for me, I remember when I was in at, at my rock bottom, you know, there was no peace. It didn't matter how much I was faking it, faking being happy, faking being in love, faking, you know, having peace. And it was not present. You know, and to experience, to have that now, like I refuse to let anything, you know, take that, take that from me or jeopardize that, you know, um, I've made some, some foolish mistakes. Um, I know I've been a hindrance or a stumbling block, you know, to others in my past. And that's why I said it's so important. Like we can't just look at it like, well, I'm just human and, uh, Jesus understands you know, we all have uh, an assignment. We all have a purpose and, and we're all connected. We affect, our choices affect those connected to us, you know? But I remember like when I was like, I was just sitting in church and I thought, I was like, there's people that literally, you know, walked away from me. Like I probably would have still had a marriage, you know, if I chose him other than Jesus. You know, sometimes those, those things arise where that person's just like, you know, I, I can't, I can't do this. But my thing is, he comes before all, you know. And when you fall in love with Jesus, you are going to know how to, to treat yourself. You are going to know how to treat other people. You know, when I encounter people that profess to be a follower of the Lord, and you don't know how to talk to people, you don't know how to treat folk, it absolutely baffles me. It really does. Because I'm thinking, like, just like you're his son or you're his daughter, how do you think he gets the glory out of that? How do you think he's pleased by that? But I also, I recently made a post where, you know, I care about people. I care about how people feel, but not at the expense of telling them a lie. You know, I'm not going to sit there and lie to you. Um, I'm going to share this and then I'm going to get up off of here. You know, um, there's a, a, a friend of mine, you know, and I think about him all the time. I miss him. But the way our a friendship established, he said to me, you know, you, you can't be my friend because Christians hate gays. And I remember when he said that to me, it really, it, it crushed, it crushed me. Because I was just thinking like, like what in the world, what has people said to you? How, how have they, you know, treated you? Well, you know, um, he would, he, he's just a sweet, tender, you know, um, spirit. But I knew the reason why he was so hardened towards God is because how people set up there and treat, and, and, less, and yes, there's no excuse for that. But I can understand the reasons for where some people are at and how they got there. You know, and I try to be that person to not be that reason for people to be at their at their low, to be at that rock bottom. I want to be able to be that person to speak life and speak words of encouragement and introduce them to Jesus. Period. You know, I know what God has done for me and my family, and I know uh, that He can do that for you and anybody else. All we have to do is, when you're pursuing his heart, uh, he makes things a lot, lot, much clearer. You know? I tell you, I didn't expect to sit there and do all that, but um, I appreciate y'all joining me, you know? And God bless y'all. Like I said, I, I just want to encourage you to not give up, to hold on, and keep running. Don't fall at the wayside. Because he's right there with you and he'll give you the strength to keep on running.